Don't make these three mistakes when giving. We were struggling financially. I know I've shared a lot of things with you and I'll continue to share them because I feel if I can be transparent, maybe it gives other people the right to feel what they feel and to admit what they've gone through. And that's why I choose to do it. We were struggling financially for a very long time. And so going to a food pantry was something that we regularly did. We're doing better now, but this was then. I remember coming in and putting the groceries on the counter. And sometimes um, it depends on which food pantry you went to. You were treated differently but I'm going to give you one experience that we had. I remember getting a cake mix and I was excited because I was going to make cake and that's a luxury, something I couldn't afford to buy with the limited amount of money that I had. So the food pantry was going to enable me to have that special thing. And so I had a cake mix and um, my daughter knew we were going to have cake so she was kind of excited. And so I started pouring the cake mix in a bowl. All of you that cook know what I'm talking about. And then you get your eggs and then probably water to add. And as I looked into the bowl, I saw one speck and then I saw another and then I realized that this cake mix had bugs. So I quickly put it in the trash and told uh, Jessie, we're, we're not gonna do cake today. And she said, why? And I said, I changed my mind. So that was out. But that wasn't all that happened at that particular food pantry. Um, this particular pantry had a little tiny shopping cart and you would have to wait until they called your name and then you would go in and the, the attendant would have a card and on the card would be your name and your ad address and how many people were in your family. And we got to the, the part of the, uh, it's like two rooms. I guess it's supposed to make us feel like we're at a very small store. So I was thankful for whatever, just so you know. I was thankful for whatever. And um, I saw the little, uh, they used to call them shelf talkers when I worked in a grocery store, but the little signs that they had made. And underneath the vegetables and soup, they had a sign that said one can per person. So uh, it depended on how many were in your family. So I had four people in my family, so I took four cans. And she said, no. And I said, what? She said, you can only have three cans. And I said, but I have four people in my family. And then she looked down at the card and said, oh, okay. So then we were to go into the room with the cereal and I got to pick a box of cereal. It could be oatmeal or, or it could be a cold cereal. There, there was no milk, but you could get the cereal, which was a help. And then the room that I'll never forget. Um, you could get toilet paper or napkins. You could not get both. And as far as toilet paper, it was one roll. Um, well, actually, what they did is if you were a family of three to four, you had three rolls. So she opened up a package of four toilet paper rolls and kept one back. And I remember feeling funny about that, but I was still thankful. And you almost have a, to have a mindset when you go to a place and you're feeling I don't know, feeling less than? I think that would be accurate. And so I, um, I felt bad, but it was, it was not anything, it was the way I felt. It was just, I didn't feel like I had much value. And so 
I happen to know somebody that worked at that food pantry and so I made my way to the car but I was so tempted to just put the couple bags back into the cart that I had wheeled out and and give it back so I told my friend I don't think I'm going to do this again and she said no why why and I told her what happened and how it felt when they took the roll of toilet paper back and it just it wasn't a good experience and so I remember her saying please please Ann, come come back please and so I, I ended up coming back and they ended up changing a couple of the rules so she she heard me and that felt good but it was hard to share that I wrote the article, um, Don't Make These Three Mistakes When Giving, and I have to tell you, when I, when I published that through Crosswalk, I think, um, I got a lot of negative comments from people. People were saying things to me like, you know, you should really be satisfied with whatever you get. And they were shaming things. And I thought, you know what? Every person has dignity. They need to be treated with dignity. But what I got out of the whole experience um, is how people that are in need, and this doesn't just mean people that don't have money. I have to share with you a story. A friend of mine, um, Jeannie, told me this story. She and her husband, Al, were missionaries. And while they were in another country, they would sometimes get care packages, which was always a treat. You never knew what you were going to get when people donated. And they got these, this one time, they got different things in their care package, and at the bottom of the box was a tin. And she almost couldn't believe it when she opened the tin. In that tin were slivers of soap and used tea bags. I said, you're kidding. She said, no. I said, that must have felt awful. She said, it did. But that was the mentality of some people, that you should be satisfied with whatever you get. So the three things that I think you should um, don't don't make these three mistakes is, number one, don't give what you toss out. If you wouldn't want to be given the thing you're giving, don't give it to somebody else. Don't give with strings attached. Um, God gave freely. He gave his most prized possession, his son, his only son. And he gave it freely, that whosoever, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God gave freely for whosoever will. You get to choose if you want the gift of salvation. There's no strings attached. And the third thing is don't give only when others know about it. And Matthew 6, 3 says when your one hand gives, don't even let the other hand know. Because if, if we're giving because somebody else will see us give, that our motives aren't right. I think of the Seinfeld episode with George Costanza, and he was in, uh, I think it was the soup kitchen, I don't know if that was the, the episode, but he was giving an offering, he was giving a tip, I think it was a tip, but the guy didn't see him put the tip in there, so he tried getting his dollar out so that he could put it in and the guy would see it and the guy saw him trying to take it out and he got accused of stealing. It was a great episode. But anyway, the whole point is give as if no one's watching because it doesn't matter who sees. It doesn't matter at all. 
I hope that what I'm sharing with you when I share these videos is helpful. I hope that, that it will somehow encourage you in some way. It's not meant to shame you or condemn you. It's meant to give you freedom so that if any of you have gone through some of these things, that you would have um, the knowledge of knowing you were not alone and there was nothing wrong with you having some of those feelings that you had. I once gave a copy of this article to a food pantry and they thanked me and they were going to put it up so the workers could see. I've been told by other places that uh, accept donations that you wouldn't believe the stuff people give. They do give what they would throw out. I, I wouldn't give that to anybody because I know what it's like to see stuff like that and think that that's okay. I don't think it is okay. I think we're supposed to give as we would give to Jesus. That's what I think. This poem is called Giving. When I give to others, Lord, the way you tell us to, let it not be things I toss, but what I give to you. Every person born on earth has worth and dignity. So help me be more generous the way you are to me. I want to pray for us, for all of us. Father God, there may be some that are struggling right now financially. I pray for them. I thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide, not the Lord might provide or the Lord may provide. The Lord will provide. I pray for whatever their needs are, Lord. And I thank you that you will meet them because you care. You care about us and you tell us to cast our cares on you because you care for us. I also pray for anyone who may need employment. I pray that you would open the doors, that you would guide and direct. And Father, would you give us a giving heart that wants to give without strings attached? that wants to give freely, whether anybody else would notice or not. God, give us wisdom. And Lord, could we give of our time to someone today? Oh, friends, people are hurting. Father, help us to be sensitive to those around us. Nudge us, Lord. Give us a name of someone you want us to contact. I commit that to you, Father, because if we have a desire, and it's a good desire, you're the author of that. And the only one that would discourage us from reaching out to others around us would be the enemy of our souls. He has come to destroy and discourage and divide. God, I thank you that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I thank you that you are almighty God, that nothing is going to happen to us today that you don't already know about. And I thank you that no matter what news we hear, you are bigger than anything we'll face. Thank you, God, for your great love. And thank you for Jesus. For we pray this in his precious name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to my stories and my poems and my heart. I hope you have a great day. See you next time.